Portrait of a Lady is one of the great realist novels of the late 19th century, and it has retained its eminence without a relevant economic or social context to support it. It is a simple tale that James repeats time and again, the expatriate American returning to Europe, the old world, to represent the fulfilled prophecies of the American dream. But it does little justice to Isabel Archer, one of the great female characters in the American literary canon, to call her a representation. Henry James creates characters who suffer as we suffer, and if you consider some of the more introspective parts of this novel, think like we think. Portrait of a Lady tells the story of Isabel Archer, a wealthy New Yorker who heads overseas to find a suitable husband and perhaps, for dreams come true, love as well. She first lands in England where she is courted by various suitors in the posh manson mansions along the Thames. When her aunt introduces her to Lord Warburton, a masculine, physically idealized figure, they develop a fairly close relationship. Fortunately, this doesn't last, as a sudden proposal from him catches her off guard and she chooses to leave for the continent. Meanwhile, Casper Goodwood, the son of a New England mill owner, seeks her hand in marriage, but past his charisma is an immaturity that naturally repulses her. He is, it seems, representative of a young and uninitiated America. When she lands on the continent, she soon meets Gilbert Osmond, an older, brooding figure that she may not be too attracted to, but nevertheless intrigues her to no end. Gilbert, though, is actually not that rich and lives in Florence as an art collector who is merely seeking her out for her fortune. At the same time, his acquaintance and secret lover, Madame Merle, are plotting to rid her of her money. Isabel is seen at the height of her misery when the plot suddenly skips several years. Here, we see Isabel becoming increasingly close with Gilbert's daughter, Pansy, though his controlling of Isabel's matchmaking gets her suspicious. She soon figures out their ploy and, in desperation, runs back to England. When her uncle Ralph Touchett dies, she is unsure whether she should stay or go back to Florence, and when Caspar Goodwood insists that she run away with him again, the decision becomes increasingly difficult. The Portrait of a Lady is a stylistic masterpiece of the realist genre, but the novel is a very symbolic work that confronts various philosophical and even psychological questions. We first have to consider what Isabel represents and why James is representing it. Surely it seems odd that this is not his only novel that includes the American going back to Europe. Daisy Miller, The Ambassadors, and The Wings of the Dove all follow the same pattern. James sought to encapsulate the, con the concept of manifest destiny that upheld the American condition. Not only was America a hotbed of enterprise, but it was, at least symbolically, a sort of text upon which free will enacted itself. In America, you could become anybody, but you could just as easily fail. Isabel is, in James's own words, affronting her own destiny in this novel, and trying to find a suitor based on her own agency. This novel is tragic in how she gets so easily manipulated, but it has been the subject of great debate as to whether she succumbed to manipulators or she simply chose her own fate. The title of the novel, suggesting fir firstly a painting but secondly a literal portrayal, you might say, speaks of how the audience wants to see her. They want her to fall in love with the British beefcake, but she doesn't. They want her to find someone she will actually love, she doesn't. People try and warn her about Gilbert, she ignores them. People are begging her to run away when she actually has a chance. But again, she doesn't. As James's readership would still be made up of many Americans, this notion of defining her own destiny speaks volumes to the American spirit. Whatever the audience wants her to do, she won't do it. This novel is also groundbreaking for the famous chapter 43, a stream of consciousness reflection of her life at a despairing crossroads. At the time this was written, James's brother William, a renowned psychologist, was one of the chief minds, if not the chief mind, in the field of psychology, and had been developing theories of the mind before Freud had even made a splash. Taking from his writings, Henry fashions a character so believable that she defies all the character stereotypes and can in no way be framed. Character depth has reached new heights, and Isabel Archer would go on to influence countless writers in the process. Though Isabel Archer stands out for her fortitude of character and storytelling, she was initially criticized for being too vague and not too concretely defined. Yes, she is a character who subverts principle to define her own future, but I think that's the point. 
she's not fully formed until everybody, including us, must disagree with the horrible but self-fulfilled path. Doing justice to this novel is difficult considering the mesmerizing refinement of his prose. Every page is a trove of complex imagery that may either reinforce his point or even challenge it. Either way, he puts the onus on the reader to decide the novel's more challenging questions. Still, Henry James's ingenuity is important for writers and readers alike, as he takes the world around us and surgically arranges it with language beyond the scope of most visionaries that came before him. Please check out our website at quicklit.com for more lessons and articles, and be sure to look us up on Facebook and Twitter to get all the latest updates.